And I do four stories per week for ABC. They're all shot in the field, pre-produced. Once in a blue moon, I will have a guest on the air. I've had Ming on live on a book tour or something, you know, someone coming through town uh, or something seasonal. So I do still do the live cooking demo um, as the host of a show or a segment with a guest. And about 10 years ago, I started a media training company called Culinary Communication, and I do this on the road outside of Chicago, teaching chefs and, and mixologists how to do this. So, because I know it's, it's a skill that a lot of people don't know how to do. They know how to cook, they know how to order, they know staffing. Um, they don't know how to handle that three minute live cooking window, um, which ultimately leads to the 30 minute cooking demo at a cooking conference or a farmer's market. So, uh, the three minute uh, live segment is a great way to kind of get started. So um, I'm going to talk for a little bit and then I'm going to show a little bit of video that I do in some of my training, kind of the good and the bad. Um, but just real basics here. I mean our goal today, and this is not going to be seen by I don't think anybody besides us, but the goal is to get you kind of comfortable with a setup with how to lead a segment. As if you were to go on your morning show in Cleveland tomorrow could you do this on NBC and could you master a three minute segment? And my tips, I mean, I always say when you start out, um, you need to be engaged with the host. You need to have a build that rapport. And so it's not about looking at the camera necessarily. It's about having a rapport with the host. So let's say, Susan just went over here. So let's say, you know, I'm the guest and she's the, the host of the program. Oh. Um, so you're, you're the host, right? <laughs> so rather than me doing my thing and just kind of doing my thing, looking at the camera and ignoring her, I'm constantly trying to engage her, make eye contact, get her involved, maybe put an apron on her, uh, have her do something really, really simple. Typically, <coughs> Most anchors, uh, most reporters in local markets are not food savvy. They don't know a ton about cooking. Um, so I give them something very, very simple to do. Have them uh, squeeze a lemon, squeeze a lemon, grate a lemon, um, whisk, <coughs> you, uh, make emulsify a dressing. You know, do something super, super simple. Add sugar to cinnamon, make a cinnamon sugar. Um, I also tell them, I tell the trainees to take control right from the beginning. So a lot of times, and especially people in the South whom I've trained, they're very, they're very reserved and more respectful of the guest and they always want to wait to be prompted. And when you're doing television, you can't wait for them to ask you what you're going to be doing next. So they'll typically say, you know, Steve, welcome to the show today. And I'll say, Susan, it's great to be here. So today I'm going to be making a chopped salad. It's kind of a riff on a cob salad. It's got a lot of great ingredients. There's going to be bacon. There's blue cheese. We can mess it up a little bit. If we want to, but there's also eggs. And so what I'm going to do to get started is I'm going to put you to work and put you on the dressing. And then I'm going to start chopping over here rather than saying, it's great to be here. Thanks for having me. And then waiting for another question. Is that right? That's right. Yeah, yeah. So a lot of times people will say, thanks for having me, or I'm making a salad today. And they wait to be prompted. And so my suggestion to you is always take control right from the beginning. Think of it as if you're running that relay and the baton is coming to you and you get the baton and now you've got to get to the next leg, which is the finish line, which is the tasting part of the segment. You want to get to the point where you can have the host taste whatever it is you're making because that's why you're on the air. You want them to taste something. Um, you also want to avoid dead air. Dead air simply means this. Nobody's talking. And so you'll find a lot of times there, there's comfort in chopping. So chefs are used to doing this, right? So you'll find them, you'll, so first thing I'm gonna do is chop up the asparagus. And there's dead air. And the host is trying to find something to say and they don't often know what to ask. And so it puts everybody else at ease if you can take control and do all the talking. And just to explain what you're doing, be a play-by-play -play person. So, so I'm going to be chopping this asparagus. I get this from a farm right down the road in Marengo, Illinois. Uh, Chef Lee Nichols, he's a great guy. We work with him all the time. Um, we get asparagus deliveries every day this time of year. Being the play-by-play, -play, talking through your actions so that there's no dead air. Uh, one more good tip would be, oh, at the end, when you are going to have the host or the anchor taste whatever it is you've made, realize that while they're tasting, what is happening? There's dead air, right? They're not talking because their mouths are occupied. So that's your opportunity again. You've got that five, six, seven second opportunity at the end of the segment to reiterate the cookbook. I'm going to be at Barnes & Noble this afternoon at 3 p.m. Come down and see me. Or, you know, at the restaurant all week long, we're having this special on asparagus. You should come out. We have an all-asparagus menu. It's going to be a lot of fun. That's your opportunity at the end of the segment when they're tasting to, to reiterate your, your main point. So I want to just show a couple quick, quick videos here. Um, 
so a not so good one and a much better one. This was from the Good Eating Show we did many, many years ago for the Tribune. It was a taped segment. It was not live. We had the test kitchen director go to the chef's uh, restaurant, and the segment was on butter. The show was on butter. So the cooking segment that week was about uh, using plugra butter in a kolachki recipe. Kind of born trade for uh, more than 30 years, and one of the telephone operators bought the kolachis to work one day. And he ate some, and he really liked them, and he asked her for the recipe. So I just uh, sort of inherited it. What if I, and obviously it uses butter. Yes. So what kind of butter do you use? I like to use Kluger butter for baking because of it has a really great rich flavor. It has less water and um, way than other butters. And it just um, creams up very nicely. What do we do first? Well, we're going to cream the butter. So there's dead air here. So we had to put music in it afterward for editing. Yes. Also tough to talk over any kind of a stand mixer or blender. So low energy is another thing. You want to have really higher energy. You want it. That's really accented on camera. If I'm just having a conversation with you right now here in this room in Aspen at the Jerome, it's fine for our conversation purposes, but it's not for television. So I'm not telling you, you got to be like this and be wham, bam. But you need to have more energy, much more energy. Um, and Ming is great at that. When we were, he was on in Chicago, it wasn't, he wasn't faking his personality. He was just being engaged and involved and um, enthusiastic. That's kind of, I want natural enthusiasm. And there was just not a rapport here. So that was a not great one. I want to show you a really good one. She was clearly in charge of that segment. You know, they asked her questions, she'd address the question, and she'd move right on to the next thing because she knew she had to get to the end. She had her mise en place ready to go. She didn't, you weren't waiting for her to stack up all of those apples to get to the end. A lot of times people just show up and they say, oh, I'll just make this dressing. It'll take me 30 seconds or two seconds to make. But they don't realize it's going to take time, people asking you questions, you're on camera, there's lights, etc. So she had thought about her steps 
along the way. Do a little bit of mandolin slicing, boom, the next thing, they're all stacked up. Judy, I want you to make some cinnamon sugar, sprinkle that around the top, give her a simple task to do. I baked it off, here's the finished one, we're gonna make a quick sauce, add some pomegranates, two and a half minutes, and she's promoted her cookbook, her restaurant, Oberweiss Dairy, et cetera, et cetera. They went on to talk about something else with the cookbook here. So um, that's kind of the, the goal, is to really be in charge of the segment, to have that beauty shot, to get the hosts to taste something at the end. Um, I'm gonna let you guys come on up here and add your two cents, because I know I'm missing stuff, and you've done this many, many times, and then we'll do some one-on-one -on -one volunteering, but come on up and whatever you think you wanna add to this conversation. Yeah. yeah. Um, well, on the, I mean, on the, I mean, I think the playfulness is always important. Like the playfulness with the host is that, you know, I think where you can get, I think it's about personality. I think they, the host like that there's a personality or the, I think the viewer likes to see an interaction. And so you could see Gail was sort of doing that, being a little bit playful. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, 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 you know, screw this. This sucks. U.S. Open. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I always find it interesting, and it makes it easier, though, to get the host to do something for you. And I think you mentioned that as well. But if they're doing something, then you get to talk more. And when you're doing stuff, they're talking. But if you give them something to do, they're going to start talking about what you're doing. So, And they'll make it funnier. Like, if you're not naturally funny, when I did Conan... I gave him a whipped cream canister and a bunch of liquid nitrogen, and he made a complete disaster all over the stage. And the tricky part about that, though, is getting, getting through to your point and getting your points across, too, because if you let them run off with it, then all of a sudden you're not going to plug your book, you're not going to plug your restaurant, you're not going to plug the stuff that you're doing, and all of a sudden it becomes you know, the Conan O'Brien show, which it should be. But then when it's all over with, you're like, shit, I only had those three minutes. What did I do with it? And then all of a sudden it was, you know, I made a disaster on the stage of, of The Tonight Show. Yeah. Yeah, I, I agree completely with both of you. I think it's, you have to, mem I mean, I know I'm coming because I have a new book. So you have to memorize those three points while you're doing the show. There's always a reason you're doing the show. You're promoting, promoting Family Reach, my charity, my new book, and the book tour. And, and I, one trick I always do, if it's with Al or Matt or whoever, I talk to them. Make sure you get five minutes with them. Sometimes that's hard because they're really busy, but they all, you always see them having coffee and, hey, dude, you got to come to Blue Dragon. It's my great new place. And, and you put plugs in there already in their head. So, hey, by the way, can you, you know, make sure you mention my new book? And Al did me a, the best thing with Kyocera knives. Right? I had my ceramic knives. And, and it's, you cannot sell your stuff on TV. Right? It delegitimizes everything while you're there. If you say, hey, use my knife, it's great. It means nothing because it's my knife. But Al, when I was just, dude, tell me about your knife. That was like magic, right? Then I'm like, oh, it's, well, it's actually ceramic. Then I, yeah, I do something like this, and I would throw something. Oh, that's not a Kyocera, see? <laughs> see you how that worked out so look, well? You want to make them look good. You do want to make them look good, but the part about fun and having fun and being funny, I think, is key. Because ultimately, this is entertainment. It is the genre of cooking and making food, but it's still entertainment. And people want to be able to see. They wanna, if they leave watching a segment or a demo, that, wow, that was really fun, and I learned something, and the book signing's at 4.30, crossing that tent, uh, then it, that's a slam dunk. And I and never worry about really talking about amounts, like how much of what oh, goes yeah, into no, what. That, I mean, it's so short, they never can get the amount. It's a waste of time to do that. I think it's more concept of technique, of like, I mean, I love to have someone sort of, you know, be able to take a knife and then, like, criticize the way that they're chopping, or be able to sort of, you know, like, you know, somehow like try to get them to get involved in a way where they feel like they, they don't quite know how to cut right. and then they're sort of embarrassed about it. But you get this sort of playfulness that happens with them. But I think that cooking tips are really important too. So you don't have much time to do that, but you can say, you know, you don't want to overmix this batter. Or when you're deep frying, you know, you want to make sure the oil's hot enough. Just a couple of things people can walk away with and feel like they've learned something. Because it's hard in those quick segments to learn. Yeah. And depending on the host, I mean, sometimes a host can be completely interactive and they want to engage with you, and sometimes they're not quite as yeah, you right. know, involved. I think the most brilliant thing about what Gail did on that, though, was when she was asked questions, her short, short answers were so 
like about the organic thing. She nailed that <coughs> in like three simple yeah. answers and it was like move on to the next thing. Right. And some people have a tendency to just go off on these tangents when you're on television. You're like, oh, they're asking me a question. This is my chance to talk. And all of a sudden there's this three minute talk about absolutely nothing and you've lost everyone's attention. I always, my, when my brother and I are working together, I'll, I'll always like call him out on that in front of everyone and then all of a sudden it becomes like this giant joke about, I'm like, dude, are you finished telling that story yet? Can we get back to cooking now? And, if he, and then he gets pissed off and like throws something at me or whatever, but it's, I thought her answer to yeah. that organic yeah, yeah, really yeah. Yeah. It's better for me, it's better for the earth, tastes better, done. Yeah. And people and, and people see that personality of Gan, right? Of Gail, right? That that she's sharp, she's quick, she's funny, she's always smiling. I That's mean, you got to smile until gotta, it hurts, right? I mean, yeah. you just Sarah, cannot. Sarah Moulton always people, says you people, have to do an inordinate amount of smiling. Yeah, I mean, it's just all the time because you have no idea when the camera's on. Usually, there's four cameras. You have no idea which camera's on your face, so there is one always, right? And uh, um, I'm still studying that technique. Smiling. Yeah, yeah. That, yeah. <laughs> I haven't learned yeah, it's yet. okay. <laughs> that, that's your upbringing. We'll work on that. Uh, that that's the next seminar, <laughs> Dr. Ruth. Now, um, this is key, though, the setup. You have to assume you're going to have no time to yeah. do anything. So if I was doing this, I would have a whole avocado, and then I have avocado slices been acidulated. And I would have tomatoes already halved, if that's what goes in the tomatoes, and the tomatoes that are not halved. Everything. I'd have a whole head of romaine so I can, you know, bust it out, but I'd have it done. And I'd also have the complete salad done, beauty, yeah. completely done. Because you never know. You might screw up anything. And the camera's like, well, so what's it look like? And mm -hmm. you, you cannot not have a dish finished. So you always have to have your beauty done. So if you really run out of time or you spill something or something happens, at least the, sa the salad is there all done. But this is so key. Uh, and how you organize it, too. I always put the ingredients in order of how it goes into my bowl, if whatever I'm making. I'm making a salad, I, so I'll put it this way. Because if you get nervous and the cameras go on, the lights are in your face, and you've never met La Matt Lauer before, you'll forget what you're doing. But if it's here in order, you say, okay, well, I guess this must go in here. And then this, it's, it's your checkpoint, your fail safe. So just have it in order and dump it in. And then if everything is gone from your counter, you pretty much did your recipe. And but I you have to check it. And I like to also have, I mean, I love to give you know, besides the sort of how to make the dish, which of course there's never time to do, but I do it anyways, which is, you know, you, like I like to have eggs that are overcooked so I could show them like the gray yep. line around the egg yolk so I could say, so see like that, that's what you don't want to do. And if it's someone who's sort of fun, it's like, I, I don't know who, I, did you make those eggs? I mean, some sort of connection to them. So someone sees like what happens when you overcook an egg. And, you know, I might want to say, you know, we don't ever refrigerate tomatoes and we don't do it because we don't want them to get mushy and mealy and the flavor so much better. Or, you know, I might talk about, you know, I work with the avocado board, so I might talk about California avocados and why they're so good you for might. you. <laughs> you <laughs> might. But those are good things you can talk about while you're chopping or yeah. adding yeah, or whisking. Sure. Those are great. It gives you extra stuff to talk about so there's no dead air. Yeah, dead air. Dead air kills you. It's, it's, yeah. it's, you cannot not have someone talking. Steve's tip was so true though. Feed the host, get them chewing, because then you have to talk. Then it's, it's your segment once they're chewing. But it's really important to get them to try along the way. Because you, if you do a whole segment and you run out of time that they didn't try it and tell the world how great the dish was, no one knows if you can actually cook. Mm -hmm. So you have to make sure, okay, well you have 30 seconds left. Dude, you gotta try that salad. Yeah. You have to make sure they take a bite. And even if it's horrible, they still say it's awesome, right? Because it's TV. So it doesn't matter what it really tastes like. But, but, you, but you have to get that legitimacy that this is a good dish. The whole world now knows it because you just loved it. And you also have to have the set like this. I'd never have a set just like this. I like always take like three or four other dishes that might make a complete meal. They may or may not get to it, but when the viewer's looking at it, they see, you know, okay, there's a skirt steak finish, and there's a platter right. of empanadas. And I might say, this would be a great meal to do for the summertime, but, you know, we're going to make this salad. Then as they're shooting, sometimes they go over, or at the end when they're eating, they see this whole beautiful table. That way that it doesn't look this sort of sterile-looking yeah. thing. So we always take... Another thing is I always take food to whatever station I'm going to so that all the... Producers and camera people Shoot, eat food, so that way then they think, oh my God, I love when Susie comes because she always brings food. Let's have her again. Yep. So for yep. them to eat, whether it, even if it has nothing to do with oh, what yeah. we're seeing. Because if you're demoing a salad, you have to realize there's obviously desserts on your menu and there's entrees, so why not show off one of those more complicated desserts? Here's our creme brulee trio that we also have at the restaurant. You know, go ahead, dig in. I brought a spoon for you. Try it. You know, you've got other things to show, not just your lonely salad. Plus, it gives you, if for some reason this 
if for some reason you think you're going to have, it goes both ways. Some usually it goes the opposite, but you'll they'll say you're going to have five minutes, and then all of a sudden you're about to go on. It's okay, you've got two and a half minutes. You know the show ran long. Now all of a sudden you have to do your thing in two and a half minutes. So you have to be prepared. On the other hand, they could come back, which doesn't happen very often. But Never you've got seven been. minutes. You know, and so now you don't have any filler. And you don't want to just waste time. So that way, having this other stuff, it's you're able to sort of go to something. You want to always have backup plans, no matter what. Have you had something go wrong before, like while you're on stage? You know, like you go to pour something into the blender and you turn and the blender doesn't, doesn't work. work. Yeah. And you're like, then you have to react to that too. And I yeah. think reaction is is another one of the most important things. Is how do you react when things go wrong? What do you do right. if one of your ingredients is missing? Are you going to say, oh, then you would add the oh, it's not here, and then you have to figure out how to recover from that, and I think that's probably yeah. one of the trickiest things. But, that, but that's where humor comes in. Yeah, yeah, right? sure. I'm making a pepper casserole. You know, peppers are overrated, right? Then you just got to say right. something because yeah. you forgot the peppers. Or, exactly. or it's right? Matt. Matt didn't bring yeah, the peppers. Yeah, so you're Matt. supposed to prep the peppers. But, but to your point, I love what you're getting at. Julia yeah. Child's most famous for this, right? Dropping the chicken on the floor. Oh, no one's watching. It's okay, right? I mean, <laughs> that's how she, she'll flip an omelet and half of it misses a pan. It doesn't face her. That's, yeah. just, that's what happens at home. Yeah. And, and they say, love it. The hosts yeah, love it. Every, the hosts love when okay things don't work. It is okay to mess up. And if something's yeah. not perfect, don't don't try to BS because there's going to be some viewers that actually know what a perfect croissant looks like. And if it actually didn't go in flat, it's actually flat. You're like, you know what? Uh, I'm used to cooking at altitude. I'm sorry, or something. But you have right. to. That's where the humor is very the helpful. The way you roll with it will depend on if they invite you back too. Because if you can show that you can handle that, like I had a guy forgot to bring a wooden spoon, and he said, I'm not going to deglaze with obviously a teaspoon. Generally, I would use this wooden spoon if I'm going to scrape the bottom to deglaze. Now, since I forgot it last night, I'm going to use a teaspoon for our purposes today. Not a big deal. So he just kind of rolled with it, and they said, fine. You know, he didn't, he didn't freak out and panic. And I think it's one of the things, and I tend to do it all the time. Matter of fact, I have a demo right after here where I've got way too many things to demo in 45 minutes because I have to catch a plane. But I think <laughs> oftentimes... I have to catch planes. I'm going to demo five dishes yeah, instead of oh, four. Yeah, no, no, it's like 12. It's uh, the <laughs> stupidest. But... On TV, I think, you know, you go and often you think you're going to be able to demo so much. And what happens is you then are panic rushing through the demo. And then that doesn't play well because it's not relaxed and fun and people pick up on that. And you're rushing to get all the dishes done. So I even like over all these years have sort of tried to learn like that kind of thing is like, just don't do as many things. Have those things there as backup. Do less things. So if you do have great hosts, you can interact with them. It can be, you know, sort of fun. You can teach them. You can talk about your book, your book tour, your restaurants, what's going on. But when you have so many dishes to get through, you don't have any time to be able yeah. to have that conversation. You want to try one? Yeah, let's do it. All right. So we'll have four volunteers. I'll take the first one. And you'll do, well, yeah. All right. We're all going to be gentle. Okay. We're all here to learn. Yeah. All right. So I'm guessing we're going to go with kind of a, a chop slash cob salad thing. Is that to your liking? What is your name, by the way? Alan. Alan. Steve. It's me. It's you. Um, and Alan, what's your last name? Salkin. Salkin. Okay. So Alan Salkin is our guest today. And are you from a particular restaurant or a place? Or I'm from the Food Republic. Okay. So when I introduce you, I'm going to say Alan Salkin's here from the Food Republic, and you're going to be making a great salad for us today from uh, this month's issue. Is that kind of the premise? Uh, yes, this month's the website, from the website. Okay. Um, and do you want to think about this for just a couple of seconds before we launch into this? Kind of think about your game plan, so strategy. I'm this. You're going to lead it. Yeah, I'm going to kind of, I'll be the host, you know, Alan Salkin. You're Gail. Exactly. It's total improv. Yeah. So it's total improv. Yeah, it's like you've got this salad, you've got some romaine, looks like avocado, um, this dressing. I don't know if there's tarragon in here or not. There's blue cheese. There's a hard-cooked egg, and bacon, cherry tomatoes. Uh, we can plate here. We've got a plate, or if you want to put it in a bowl, maybe a plate might be better to see the food better. Mixing bowl. We've got uh, large tongs. If you want larger tongs, or no? Mm, yeah. Large tong. There was a there was a whole bunch of tools. Here. I'll use these. These are fine. Those are good. Okay. I'll roll All with right. It. You got a knife. If you want to slice anything. All right. You know, as long as they don't show porn on the air. Where's Susan? Did she leave? Oh, there she is. And does it matter for your purposes? Um, actually, are either you guys be able to be mobile to come up here to shoot it or no? No. No, you're going to just stay back there. Um, can you, are you, so you're going to stay wide the whole time? Make sure it's still recording. Okay. 
Because um, one of the things I like to teach people also is you want to use your hands to direct the camera's attention typically. So if there's a floor camera here, you'd be able to point out like, one of the things I'm using is that, you know, avocados, okay. these are from California or whatever. Um, but we're not going to have that benefit. So we'll just do our best. And is this gentleman in your way just head-wise? I don't know which camera's shooting, but yeah? Sorry. Sorry. Okay, Alan Salkin from Food Republic, that's the, okay, so who's going to be my timer? Someone have a, a stopwatch? So, so three minutes, so at two minutes, if you'd give me a, a one minute sign, and then at 2.30, if you'd give me a 30 second sign. So one minute, 30, yes. No, we're going to go. One minute and then 30 left. One minute and then 30 left, yep. You be three good to total. me. I'll tell you what, I'll give you 180 seconds. <laughs> All set? Okay. Welcome to the show today, everybody. Alan Salkin is here today from Food Republic. It's this exciting new website. He's got a really interesting salad recipe for us today. Kind of a riff on a Cobb salad. Alan, welcome to the show today. Thanks, Steve. This is a, actually an Aspen, special Aspen salad. I've, I brought some uh, romaine lettuce from that actually grows on the top of the Ski Mountain. It's a very rare thing. It's fertilized with uh, fox guano. Oh, cool. So we're just going to okay. put this in here. You know, I think it was really interesting when you were talking about that tip from Sarah Moulton that people should always be smiling when uh -huh. they're on TV. It's actually in my, my book that's coming out uh, called uh, in, um, From Scratch Inside the Food Network. Oh, okay. So a lot of the people who are here today are in that book. And okay. I'm really excited to, uh, that that's coming out. So this is some avocado that actually was flown in uh, from California, but um, it's actually very expensive this year. So you might, you don't want to use the whole bit, just a little bit <laughs> of the avocado. Now, is this book going to have lots of recipes in it, or is it just kind book of... The book has no recipes. I okay. was thinking of putting one in from the Frugal Gourmet, because he's so on the outs now, the whole <laughs> child molestation oh, thing. Oh, the frug, but, yeah. Yeah, the frug. He used to drink... Um, whole uh, clear glasses of, of what he said was water. But, um, <laughs> but we know it wasn't. Anyway. There was so, proof to it. Yeah, okay. And I, I know this is from your family farm. You're very excited about this. Um, the Delinsky family yeah, farm. Yeah, can you dump the rest of that in there? Sure, Thank sure, you. sure. What is this? Uh, You're screwing it cheese? Up. Not that much. So. Okay, all right, good, all right. And then uh, th these are actually eggs from Ming's family farm. Um, uh -huh. In, in uh, Dayton, Ohio, where, where Ming is from, and uh, it's very, I'm very excited that he brought them along with, that, with him. And then this is this bacon. I, everything here is from somewhere, and I really think it's important that uh, <laughs> that we know the uh, origins of all of our food. So right. th this is actually from a, a pig. Um, it, it's called Charlotte's Farm. It's, it's kind of sad. All the pigs are named Wilbur, oh, but but okay. you know they eat spiders, and their and their bacon turns out really delicious. Evie White would love this yes. bacon. Okay. And, and then finally these de these delicious uh, tomatoes, which I really actually don't like cherry tomatoes because I don't either. I don't like the burst. But if you cut them in half, uh -huh. they don't burst in your mouth. They burst on the cutting board, and it's a lot easier to eat. That's a great and, plan. And make sure to always hide your fingers. And uh, you gotta have a, sh a sharp I learned knife. that as a writer. Yeah. Okay. And that's it. And then you dump the dressing in. Yep. A little bit, and can you uh, help me toss that? Sure, sure. With my fingers or with the tongs? Use or? the tongs. All right, use the tongs. Okay. Um, at home, you can you can use the uh, your your fingers as long as you're doing it privately in the kitchen. Okay. And why don't you take a taste of this? Okay. Uh, uh, we'll we'll plate, plate it. for you. Yeah. yeah, that's always good to plate it. Thanks for that tip. And we'll get a. Yeah. Yep. yeah. <laughs> Appreciate that. I, okay. You know, at, at home, I normally I'm, I just watch golf and I just eat this straight out of here with tongs. But this is the right way to do. It. We're at a food festival. Yeah, go it ahead is, and okay. eat it. Isn't that the best, like, fake TV salad you've ever had? I, I got to say, you know what? When I have a segment, you're going to be booked on it for sure. Thank Alan you. Salkin from Food Republic. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you. Well done. Well done. Right under three minutes? Uh, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, it was 2.50. Wow, great. Yeah. It's good. <laughs> Next. <laughs> Fresh ones, yeah. So we're gonna. Um, <laughs> do we want to play that back and talk about what he did right or wrong? Yeah. yeah. We'll play. Can we play it back? Sweet. Oh, I love technology. Great job. Great job. And you can fast forward a little so bit since this isn't really the. One minute and 30 left. Yep. You do this and wait. All set? Okay. Welcome to the show today, everybody. Alan Salkin is here today from Food Republic. It's this exciting new website. He's got a really interesting salad recipe for us today. I'm clearly not sure what camera I'm on.
fertilized with a box well, I'll say at the very beginning, you want to have established who you are for about seven to ten seconds so they can identify your name and title before you move into it. Yeah, you want to jump right into it. Give us like seven to ten seconds, establish who you are, why you're there, and then jump in. Hi, nice yeah. to meet you. Yeah. Yeah. And when you're picked up the bowl of lettuce, when he picked up the bowl of lettuce, the camera can't stay with the thing if you're constant, if you're moving. It's got to stay on the edge through the lettuce. He used to drink full clear glasses of his head was water. But we know it wasn't, and there's no proof to it yet. And I, I know this is from your family, so I'm very excited about this. Because the one she got, can you jump the rest of that in there? Sure, sure, sure. Good. Uh, Give me a simple task. Yeah. I like how your voice goes up and down. It's not monotone. I hear your voice go up and then it goes down. There's more interest to your voice that way. You don't want to just be monotone. So the only thing I would have done is, I would have, I would have made sure to taste it first because you're the chef. So you gotta taste it first, so it's awesome before your guest tastes it. Thanks so much. And I might have given. I mean, I think you know, even though being playful is important and the story is important, I think a, a little bit more about the tip, like a little bit more, like God, I don't want to overmix my salad, blah blah blah, or. You know, I don't want to refrigerate these tomatoes or, you know, just a, a little bit more to engage the viewer with tips, I think is helpful. And just remember, seven to ten seconds right off the top, why you're there, what you're doing today, what you're about to do, thanks for having me, good to see you, whatever. Um, that allows the director to tell the camera to get a head and shoulders shot of you, to put your name, title, book, whatever you're, why you're there, and then launch into it and off to the races, as we said. The one thing Susan said that this is, this is key. You cannot ever do, and I love romaine salad, because the cameras don't yeah. move fast. Cameras go like this. So it's, they don't always, even, they, yeah. it's always pointing. We have romaine, avocado, dressing, blue. And I do, and I try to do a, a quick rehearsal with the cameras, even there's no direct round even. It says, hey, guys, by the way, I'm going here into my pan. Here's my swap out. We're going to play it over here. So they have an idea that's going to go right to left to left to right. Yeah. Uh, but it's so important. You can take it. You, if you want to work with something, you can take it and put it here and then start playing around with it, right? Then you can lift it up like this, but just keep it in one spot so then the camera's on it. Yeah, they, um, they, they actually, they even, mo and any of the national shows, they come through, they block it like they want to know. I mean, you don't always yeah, follow it, but they want to know, well, I'm going to start here, I'm going to go here, I'm going to go here, and if you're going to pick something up, put it right here and hold it. So there, otherwise the viewer doesn't see anything at all with it, so it's really important. Who's next? You do want to pick one up and speak about it. It's always nicer to point at like the whole tomatoes, and then later have like the chopped tomatoes in your hand and be working with those right. because obviously those big, whole, bright red tomatoes look better. Okay, so yeah. Oh yeah. Hi, yeah. Uh, I guess on the way. Right. You want to go? Well, I'll go. Sure. Me? Why don't you do it? Really? Okay. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Do you have a timer? Oh yeah, I got a timer. Let me just stand. What is your name? Kelly. Me. Me. Sissy. Sissy. Kelly, don't be nervous. We haven't started yet. <laughs> Jasper White used to have a. Jasper White used to bring a cooler of oysters.
to every shoe, he would always eat a half dozen oysters to calm himself. <laughs> right? It's, it's, everyone has their own trick. And so, you know, I tell you, it, <laughs> yeah, that's the way. no, but I, I've done it. When I do East Meets West, or did my old uh, Simply Ming, when I have guests on, uh, my sous chefs came on once, and they were both so nervous. We just plied them with alcohol. We just do it here. Come on, hey, cheers, shoot, you know, and I'm like throwing. And three shots later, they were fine. But there's always that trick. So right. I'll give you a one left and then a 30 left. So, I'm, what's your whole name? Kelly Thompson. Kelly Thompson, okay. So, Okay. Do you have everything? Oh. Right? Just need a bowl. I think it's awesome. Yeah, we need uh, just a. Uh, we have a salad bowl, guys. Yeah. Salad bowl. Yeah, awesome. Dressing. Yes. Here's your salad bowl. Thank you much. And tong. I guess I'll use the tongs no, for the remain. We have tongs here. Yeah. And set up your mise how you want it set up. Yeah. yeah move, move whatever you want to move. I think the one other thing Alan could have done uh, in the very beginning. Uh, usually they do a tight on the host, so it'll be on you know Al Roker, and then they spread it out, right? So you don't want Alan is kind of Alan's just like this, right? And then oh hi, you want to be doing something. So slice scallions or finish doing something. So then when it goes to the wide shot, you're a chef, you're cooking. It's oh hey, nice to see you, and then go from there. Anyway, yeah, you ready? Are you ready? I'm ready. I forgot your last name again. Thompson. Kelly it's Thompson. right here if you need to. Kelly Thompson. Look okay. down. All right, <laughs> and go. Hey, this is Meng Tsai. Welcome to KCBY Denver. I have Kelly Thompson here from Fannie Farmer's Farm Fresh Stand. Kelly's nice hey to have Hey, everybody. You nice to be here. Thank you. Well, we nice got to have a, you here. Nice, thank you, Ming. It's what are you nice making? To be here. What do we got? We have a Cobb salad we're going to make today. Um, you know, I'm from California, so we got okay. some nice California avocados we're going to use. All right. And I'm uh, just going to get this salad started. That's it. Yeah. Looks good. What are all, all these right. ingredients? Yeah, we have some romaine, some okay. of the avocados, of course. Right. Some cherry tomatoes, some uh, boiled egg. And we have some chopped bacon, <laughs> and we also have some nice blue cheese. Fantastic. So what we're going to start to do is we're going to put the romaine in the okay. bowl. Can I do anything? Sure. Why don't you um, chop up the tomatoes? Half the tomatoes? You can okay, have sure. those if you like. We'll just start with a little bit of romaine. So why cooking? So why cooking? Because I like to eat. <laughs> why does it? Why does everybody yeah. cook? Uh, yeah. Yeah. It's you just good. gotta ingest all the food. Keep going. And so yeah, we're, you can toss those in when you get those made. Yeah, I'm a little slow here. Yeah. God dang. <laughs> well, that knife needs to be sharpened. So we need some kind of sharpener here. But we're gonna add some uh, fresh bacon that's been chopped coarsely and crisped. Right. And then we have some blue cheese here we're going to add. And you see the eggs from your farm. Yes. If you'd like, you can quarter them, and quarter that would them. be lovely. I'm sure they're already half. get through that. So who taught, <laughs> who, who taught well, you hopefully how to cook? They're, uh, my grandmother and mother. I uh, grew up in the south, and uh, till I could stand on a chair is when I started cooking. And then I just love to eat. So you know. So what else goes? You almost we got to do the avocado last. So we'll cut that in. Um, cut yeah, we'll cut it up and like dice. Dice it. Yeah, okay. probably like. Like that. Yeah, that looks cut great. Thank you. All right. Nice. All right, so we have all our ingredients in the bowl, and so we're just going to add a little bit of dressing, not too much. You just don't want to saturate the salad. So what we're going to do is just toss it, give okay. it a little nice toss. And you have a new book, is that right? What's it called? Um, it is called Cooking with KY. <laughs> okay. It's coming you know, out this fall. You well, know, I, I have the I have the video. And I well, <laughs> it's, just, it's very informative. Yes, it is. <laughs> it's for adults only, so yeah, make sure your kids are gone. <laughs> well, actually, my kids loved it. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's always a plus. Then I'm glad to hear that. All right, so we have all our ingredients in the bowl, and so we have just a nice Cobb salad with local ingredients I'll take and my fork. All yeah. Right, may I? You may. Wow. I hope it's delicious. Delicious. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Good luck with your Thank book you tour. Thank you with your eggs. Excellent. Good member. <laughs> KY, always. <laughs> Good job. That was not bad. I didn't taste it first. Though. Yeah. No, that was uh, 254. 254, it. 254 yeah. so right under three. Um, most so, important thing, right off the top, yeah, sure, we'll you got to gotta look at the uh, host. Oh. Yeah, you are, yeah. You, because and that's so. That's, See, I feel like I should look but at guess the what? No. Don't don't. Okay. Yeah, you Sorry. never look at camera because you don't know which camera. So then they're gonna. Oh, you're right. You, you're gonna get you this shot. But if, if you were doing it alone and there wasn't a host, then yeah. you're talking to the audience. But right. now you're just talking to I'm me. Talking to that's him. it. So it's because yep. then Sorry, all of a sudden buddy. he becomes irrelevant no, okay. in it. Yeah. The other thing is, um, just 
way too much. You were doing what Ming should be doing. You were mixing while Ming was doing, to me, Ming was doing all the chopping. So you were like, OK, Ming, chop that, chop that, chop that. So you, it was sort of like. He was a chef. Yeah, I mean, that's how it felt. And you were, like, you don't know that he can chop, or you can say, do you cook? You know, do you want to cut this? But then you want to keep, because Ming kept having to lead you. Yeah. Like, should it, what next? What's next? Should I do the tomato? Should I do the, you know? So you want to take, you want to take control of it. You can have Ming do it like you did the tomatoes, but then say, okay, I'm going to cut the avocado and I'm going to add that in here. Ming, can you taste that salad dressing? Do you think, you know, you can keep him busy, but you don't want him to do all yeah, of give, that. Give the host the mundane stuff, like cinnamon sugar. A host can make cinnamon sugar. A host can maybe peel an apple or something that may take more tedious time. And the intricate stuff, dicing an avocado, should be you, right? Yeah. Doing right. that. Because you uh, want to be teaching Ming, right. Ming, yeah. the viewer. And you're right, so you, you, need, to, you need to taste. You did do this, though, know, right? You lifted the bowl, so you can't do that. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, but you had pretty but good. You were, Your yeah, energy you was great. Good. Your also, personality just was... watch the blocking again. If there's a, even if there's a camera, oops, sorry. Glasses. Ooh. Up here. Um, they're going to be shooting this way, right? So if you've got a bowl up here, and you're working behind it, and you're slicing behind it, yep. they're oh, not. They've got, uh, they've got a. No, that, that's clear key. Shot. I mean, I, you have to. As soon as you work, you always clear. Once this is done, you just clear stuff out of the way. It's okay to stack. Okay. Because you always want to keep this. It's mm -hmm. pristine. I mean, obviously, you don't really want to be cleaning up like this on camera, but you, you can always move stuff over. Uh, to Steve's point, you want to have full access to to seeing what you're making. You. So it's always got to be with the you and the host. Energy was great. It's good. Yep. Yeah, energy is really. Should good. be like a team effort like that. You know, yeah. you're having fun, you're smiling, yeah, you're yeah, getting them involved. Great. That's all good. But just make sure your attention's on the host, not on the camera. Right. Okay. I always want to look at the camera. Yeah. Good, good job. Good job. Good job. Yeah. Good job. Yeah. All right. Who's next? I like an autographed copy, please. <laughs> <laughs> we'll take your uh, microphone off too, Kelly. Take your microphone. Oh, off. I'm sorry. I guess it's the last rule. Yeah, they, they, they won't let you walk out with a $3,000 mic. Like, oh my God. Well, that, no. Robin Leach is that one. Who else is going to go? Somebody else? I know someone else want to go. Yeah, come on up. We've got time. Going up. Susan, you want to do this? Sure. All right. Why are you here? Why are you here? Why are you here? You know, I'll sit over here. Just I'll time cue here. One minute left, 30 seconds left. Yeah. Yes, our, our summer salad. KY summer salad. Is yeah, yeah. <laughs> that right? That was a good line. Hi. How are you? Good. I'm Kathleen Squires. <laughs> Kathleen Squires. I am a food and travel that. writer for the Wall Street <laughs> Journal, Zayat.com, many oh, other fantastic. publications. I'm also a cookbook writer. Fabulous, Kathleen Squires. OK. You have, you have this set up how you want? Let's see. This is pretty good. Do you have a tasting fork? That's always important to oh, the yeah. horse. Okay. Yeah. That. Good. Got them. Do you have tongs? Tongs. There you go. Okay. Excellent. And whenever you start talking is when I'll start the clock. So whenever. All right. Well, welcome. I'm Susan Fettiger. We're here on Food Network with Kathleen Squires from Wall Street Journal and from all travel, all sorts of travel writing. Welcome. Thank you, Sue. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. So tell me why we're here today. What are we doing? Well, we're here today, Susan, because do you remember when Hillary Clinton said that she doesn't bake cookies, but she makes a mean salad? Yes, I do. Her salads have nothing on my salads. So right now, we're going to... Love gonna... that. <laughs> okay, Kathleen, let's go. Then. I have a new book called Salads by Squires, and this recipe comes right out of it. Fantastic. Well, we're in the middle of summer, so what are we working with? Well, we're working with some romaine. We're going to do a chopped salad, kind of a spin on a cob salad. And wh why do we use, why are you using romaine? Well, that's a very classic ingredient in a cob salad. And also, romaine chops up very nicely. So if you're doing a chopped salad, you don't want something that's going to be limp. You want something that has a little right. texture. Great, great. We have some nice cherry tomatoes. We have and are they? Are, do you prefer cherry over heirloom tomatoes? Or well, I love heirloom tomatoes, but they're not in season right now. Okay, so good. These right now are just coming out, so I think they're perfect to use Fantastic. in salad. Susan, in a salad, you want to use the freshest ingredients possible. So anything that's in season, grab it. Okay. Nothing out of a can. That's another rule of a salad. 
And was that one of Hillary's rules too? Uh, I don't know if Hillary had many rules I on see. salads. Uh, yeah, that's true. I don't think she did have many rules. Okay, <laughs> so let's see. Let's try this salad. Okay, Susan. So it's a chopped salad. So we're gonna have to do a lot of chopping. Okay. I'm gonna let you do the chopping. Oh, fantastic! And I'll show you how to do so, to make this salad. Okay, I want to make, sure, make sure I don't cut my hand okay. off here. Okay. Okay. So, so start with the tomatoes. How do you want me to cut them? Just you know what the best thing about making a salad is that there's not a lot of technique involved. It's a free for all. I mean, you're not at you're cooking at home, so you can cut okay. them any way you like. Just so, cut them right, right in half. How's that look? That, Does that look good? Yeah, it's a nice little chopped Gosh, salad. I Ooh. like that. That's really nice. <laughs> These cherry tomatoes have a lot of burst. Just All right, toss we them. got some cherry tomato there. Okay, we're going to so toss them right in the bowl. I think we ought to keep going because I want to taste this. Yeah, salad. let's so what go. We, what's so, next? Okay, so why don't you throw in some romaine here? Okay, well, why don't, you better do that. Okay. You better cut some more things for Exactly. You, you got to chop up that avocado nicely. Okay, you want me to just chop it up or do you want it in yeah, there? Yeah, just a little. Ex that is perfect. That? Is that yeah, I love your technique. Like that? As okay, I said, good. I wasn't free sure. for all. Let's okay, do it. Okay, there you go. Then what? <laughs> then, okay, well, we're almost done here, so we've got to get that. Let me go. Okay. There you go. Does that look Let's good? Let's go. Toss there in that go. bacon. Okay. All right, where's get the Get some egg in there. Let's chop uh, it up. Let's you like it without salad dressing? I No, you know what? I always have a great dressing. Do I you? like a little sweet, a little spicy. Let's uh, grab right, some right here. All right, we're going to have to finish up in. here today. Okay, let Toss me see. Toss it around. All right. Thank you so much. Good luck with your new book. It's wonderful having you on. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Speed cooking. Mm. Thank you for having minutes. me, Susan. <laughs> wow. That could buy us very quickly. <laughs> so, now, I don't know if that was on purpose, but I love it. You were you asking questions. It was. And it's okay. because... I just wanted to do that to you. Right. Sorry. <laughs> no, it's okay. I but was ready. <laughs> sometimes you do. Sometimes you get the host and they just won't shut up. <laughs> and you can't get a word in. And okay. it's hard to keep the segment going. So you do have to like, okay, let me do this. And this, you have to keep it going. Because right. You have to start cooking when they say go. Okay. You have to. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Because you, you it, like it flies. That was a chopped salad where everything was already ready. Yeah. Right. The activity, right. the cooking didn't start until 1.32. Okay. So wow. you were already halfway into done with the segment and you hadn't started cooking yet. Okay. And so, yeah, so you have to figure out how to have the energy with the host, but keep it moving. Right. right. Keep it moving. And so even if you're being playful like that and talking, you got to keep it moving. Okay. And it is sometimes you do have hosts and they just go off. I mean, I've done demos like with Bob Saget and forget it. Like if you can, <laughs> you can't get one thing done. You cannot. So you just have to like say, shut up, Bob. Okay. And you know, and you just have to is, sort of. There's a tendency to tell p the host what you're going to be working with today. I'm going to have blue cheese. I'm going to have bacon. I'm going to have this. And then when you actually get to using that in the demo, you've already told people what you're working with today. There's yeah. no more surprise. So wait until you're actually adding it to the salad. Now I'm going to add this bacon. It's been smoked twice by Newski. It's a Newski bacon product. I really like it. I'm going to add this to the salad now. Or, this is a Maytag blue cheese I like to use, rather than doing that all at the beginning, because you're wasting, you're spending all that precious time at the beginning, right? Right. right. So you want to, like, within 20 seconds, you want to start cooking. Great. Thank and you. The, okay. And the more I think you can do it, the thing is, I think, you know, you'd want to have two knives anyways, for right. sure. Right. So that the host and you can both be doing. But I think it's better is get that done, and then you can sort of, when you know you're almost there, then you know, then you can slowly add the dressing and you can start to talk about stuff because then you know all you have to do is plate it. Right, yep. right, okay. Great. Yeah. Great, thank you so Good. much. Good job, good job. <laughs> thank you. Good job. You. Take your mic off. One more person wants to go? One person wants to try? You want to try it? Yeah? Yeah, yeah. Hey, this guy, okay, sorry, all right. All right, well, I'll mention it right now while we're in between. Restaurantbriefing.com to watch all the other seminars, right? Restaurantbriefing.com to watch the other seminars from earlier. Um, and this is at briefing, and we're also hashtag MX Trade. Yeah. Okay. And I think that Michael said he was going to try to sort of, you know, imagine himself as being the other main opponent. Oh God, that'll be. Or, I mean, the other the other good way to practice it, Michael, is to kind of play dumb. When I do media training, I really play dumb. I don't. Cause I I know food terminology and I know sort of chef speak. But I'd rather play dumb because that's typically what you're going to get, somebody who's just not as comfortable with food and with the tech terminology. And so it's up to you then to kind of lead them, like take them by the hand, rather than saying, go ahead and chop all that. Because you know, you're know you not going to do that typically. You're going to be doing most of the work. Have them do that cinnamon and sugar, simple thing. So if you, I mean, I'm not saying that's so you have to do it, but play it a little less than you normally would, right? To make it a little more challenging for this guy. And I'll give you the one minute left and a 30 seconds left. Got it. 
Ready? Whenever you want to go. Ready. Hi, I'm Michael Voltaggio. Welcome back to another episode of From Shoes to Salad. Today, you guys might know Van. He's our guest today. Van, like the Van Shoe Company, right? So That's you me. were making yep, Vans yep, before. Yep. Like the shoe <laughs> now, automobile. And now, so you've, you've gone from that into cooking, making salads. What kind of salad are you making for us today? Well, it's, it's a little bit of a, a spin on a cob. We're in Aspen today, so I wanted something sort of crisp and clean for the summer. Crisp and clean like the mountain air. You want to do like something? Like the mountain air. So how did you get from shoes to salad? How did that? It's been an interesting road. My family went under and I started chefing and sort of worked my way up through Brooklyn and other places. And next thing so you you've know, got a really cook. great sense of smell. You're, it's and a, and it's the gotten book better. You're, the it's book you were better. talking about. So tell us about this book. And you're going to start making this cob salad as well for us. Yeah, what I'm going to do for you today, well, the book we'll get to a little bit later. Today we need to educate you and your family. A little bit of lettuce here. Now, how do you know when you've got, I mean, obviously you've got an eye for shoes. How do you know that you've got an eye for salad? Like, what made you well, figure, you know, like, you, you know, this is how you, this is a great polka dot pattern, by the way, that, that Van, Van uh, designed for us today. And, and now he's, I don't see much polka dots in here, so. Well, you know, the, the shoe's one thing, the salad's another. That's dead space Not right exactly the, <laughs> the same sort of thing. All right, so. We put in the romaine. The right? romaine's in the bowl. Okay. okay. What's next? We, we start with the basics, right? I'm going to chop the tomatoes. So you're just nice you're, and clean. You're, you're cutting them in quarters. And I don't know where your producers are, but we need to talk to them about sharpening these things up a little bit. Sharp knives are important. Yeah. So that way it doesn't explode. On now the how? Board. Now how do you manage your time? You know, between the shoe factory and the salad factory. And do you serve this in a box as well, or do you just... It, oh, it all comes in a box. Okay. Well, okay. you know, when you get it to go, it comes in a little brown box. When you come in the restaurant, we have square bowls that we serve our salads in. It's always lovely. Square like bowls. That. Right. Yeah, everything. Bacon, everything, all the way down. Now, what if I just wanted to eat it right out of here? You know, well, if you... The could vessel you, is could, up could to you. you. Just, could you just kind of put some on the side like that and... You want just uh, lettuce and boiled egg, or can we put the bacon and the dressing? I want the works, man. I, I want everything that goes in there. All right. Well, let's bring it. Now Start this with recipe's this. in your book. You were saying that a couple minutes ago. It is. Yep. Let's okay. get that in there. Now a little bit of this, because you know if you don't get the crunch on there, it's not a cob unless you really get it in there with all the other yeah. things. And just like a shoe, you know, we got to get something that has a little bit of a reek, like a that, bait bag, smell extra or, or uh, you know. We'll, let's just, just a yeah, little just, bit just pour it all right, we'll get it I mean, all in there. We're already yeah. past the point of right. no return at this so point. There so there we go. And, you know, the dressing you'll add at your own leisure. Well, I so, think we'll leave know. that one in the bowl. All right, so the rest of it. Right, so we don't want to leave any of the rest of the bacon. That's what And I believe we have Ming Sai as our guest to taste this today as well. Right? So it is. So, so get him up here. So Ming, come here. It's a chunky. This didn't come out of his shoe. We actually made this ourselves. She has a much better palate. With and shoes. here. Let's give this a quick toss. go ahead and toss it. Oh, yeah. okay. All right. Come Get on, in there. Susan. Yeah. Get in there. Susan Vinegar. Break up that cheese. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Time. And Three minutes. And from Van Shoes, Van Salad, Salad to Shoes, Van Congratulations. Thank you. Good luck. <laughs> now. Enjoy your shoes. I'm not sure where to start with Do you that. want to keep this? Or <laughs> you're, okay. I would I would say it was it was fun, but it went off the rails a bit. Um, I think that's that's where you've got to really pull it back. Remember we just talked about that last segment. You've got to pull it back and take control and say, let him do his crazy thing. But like, that's really cool, and I, I'm going to try that after the segment's over when I get back home. But I really want to get through. I'm going to finish this one for you, so you can really taste how we do it at the restaurant. You know, you got to bring it back because it's your segment. You got to take control of that. So it's hard. Both. That's what their show's yeah. all about. It has, their shows have nothing to do with cooking. Right. And I learned that real fast. When I got there, I'm like, this isn't about food at all. So it's hard to like get your point across when you're in that situation. And I used to walk out of there and be like, those assholes. <laughs> <laughs> but again, the chances these guys are not going to start on Conan. They're going to start on local morning television. So that's why I want you to get in that habit of you got to pull it back and take control of it and be the one in charge and get through that because the three minutes is done and nobody tasted anything and you sort of you didn't quite finish it. Right. Um, and you've got you to get it done by 2.45 so that there's another 15 seconds of pad at the end so you can promote the restaurant or the wine dinner or the special event or the book signing you got coming up. So you don't just get to three minutes and they've tasted it and you're done. You've got to have a little time at the end. Maybe you can talk about the dessert you also brought. But you've really got to take control of it. I mean, it was good rapport. It was fun. But at some point, you've got to bring it back, right? Bring it back to you and take control and get through it. Uh, yeah, any, any, uh, any other questions? Just three more. 
I know, but we only got about five, ten minutes left. Just any questions in general about any of this? I don't think we'll have time to get through one more person. No? All right, well, restaurantbriefing.com for all the videos, um, all the seminars from all the panels. And anything, am I missing anything else? I guess that's it. If you cut yourself, uh, Dan Aykroyd, yeah. Um, it happens. You got to just, yeah. just push your, I mean, normally if you're right hand, you cut your left hand, right? You just have to, you have to fake it. You just got to, you, you have you to just hold it. Or yeah. you make the hook, you know, you just say, oh, oh my God, that's why you want to have a sharp knife. But here, you finish this up, so chop that good, just, and you just have to move it, pass it on to the hook. Yeah, you can always, you can always put your finger in and just hold it. You have to keep pressure. Yeah. yeah, that, that dull yeah. knife could have killed someone. I mean, you definitely don't want to have blood in the food. Yeah, <laughs> no, it's true. But it'd be a funny riff on Dan Aykroyd and Julia Child, and you know, yeah, well, definitely you got to play with, you got to roll with it. I've done nothing wrong. <laughs> I've never done anything. <laughs> Have you ever anything go, things go awry though? Have you had any things like things didn't heat up or? Yeah, like the, the blender doesn't work and you're making a pureed soup or a sauce and the blender doesn't work and you have to sort of go like, well, you know, just imagine if this were, you know, you're just shaking really hard, pretend like it. You can imagine it being pureed. I mean, you just sort of. You just talk you know, through the it. The burner's not working. You have to sort of shift gears. But to, to that point, you have your soup plated. Yeah. So, then, so even if it didn't work, didn't it? And this is what it looks like once it's pureed. And you talk it through. I had, I was doing on East Meets West years ago, and, and I was, we used to do five shows a day. So we did, just bang them out, right? And it's live to tape, meaning you basically try to keep that tape and don't edit it. So I'm in the middle of a segment. It's just, it was my show, and my guest was coming on next. And it was, a, it was a solid segment, seven minutes into it, and I just had to throw, throw the commercial break, get, get, some, get some bok choy in the pan, and I, my pan wasn't on. And so, and, and once I put the oil, you can tell it wasn't dense. So I just went in my mic. It says, okay, it's going to break. No one caught it. <laughs> That's so, great. Just try. BS and works. The camera people are pretty quick to go off that if there's a totally. issue there. I had one time on Food Network where, you know, I was blending soup. Where she would give me a big hot pot of soup, and I put it in the blender, put the top on. It was like a lettuce soup, and I turned the blender on. The whole thing like exploded all over my jacket <laughs> completely, and it was like Millican, like what? And but the concept was that you know it was like always remember when you're putting in the hot soup into a blender, you want to make sure you let the top come off so the steam gets released so it doesn't overflow. Like Millican just made me do it. You know, I made that hurt or something. Is that why you wear green chef coats? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Can't even tell. Oh, what to wear? But what to wear? Solid colors? It's California no, out of right? yes, yeah. No tight stripes, no tight patterns. Solid colors are best. No jewelry. No jewelry, okay, right. Jewelry. Yeah. I just don't think no jewelry. It's distracting. Yeah. Uh, but solid colors are always best. Darker solid colors are great, I think. Well, do you guys find it beneficial going on these shows, or you just find it in a way? Oh, beneficial. No, beneficial. No, beneficial. Okay. It's, it's practice. It's practice. It's practice. <laughs> Every time you get the new segments, the early morning stuff and the things like that with the companies that aren't like your own thing, it just gives you more time to, because you can't, you're not controlling that situation. When you have your own show, I mean, Ming produces most of the content that's on his shows probably now, so he's in control of all of that. When you're in this situation, you have no control of it. So you, the more you do it, the more comfortable you are with the whole situation. And so it's like going on a job interview when I was first coming up as a cook. I would go and do tastings for jobs, even though I didn't want the job, because I wanted to practice the act of tasting and trying out for a job. And now this thing is kind of the next part of that process in my career. So you also be more comfortable doing live demos in front of people at farmers markets and Aspen of classics, and you need to have that experience of filling up dead air and getting people involved and talking through the whole thing, talking through your actions. That it's all good practice. So in, yeah. In a situation where you have another person, not not the host, for example, but a guest like me. What are the characteristics of that person that you want to find? That I want to what? What are the characteristics of that person you want with you? And who would you not want at, at any cost? Uh, I mean, my, every guest on my show I have a connection with, either their friends, chef friends, or parents, literally. And because you can't have a complete stranger come on. It's very hard because I'm not an interview show. You know, if I was in today's show, you know, t he's never met whatever writer, that's fine. But uh, I think the reason it works is there's a report you can tell on TV, that there's true respect with the parents or true love or there's you know, camaraderie amongst the chefs. And, 
you know, when Jacques was on, you, you can just feel it. And, cause, and by the way, we're not acting. So I don't want to have to act like I like someone if, if I don't know that person. So it's really important to me that I have a rapport. Um, and I could just, it could just be one time too, right? I, you know, as long as there's connection. Because you need to have some base uh, of connection for it to, I think, be successful. Or some so. purpose. Maybe it's a, you know, oh, a goat cheese fiber or a chair. Yeah, yeah. You know, something sure. that you didn't have a connection. Right. Yeah. These are situations where you're set up, you're going to a studio and you're doing something. Is it different if, for example, like the news came to your restaurant and wanted to shoot you cooking? Do you do something different or is it different? It's going to be taped probably then. I mean, they're not going to shoot it live, no. so it'll be taped. They'll so shoot. They might. Local does. Yeah. Say. I mean, the, the setup should be the same. You want to still have all your mise en place and all ready and your backup in the finished dish. Uh, a lot of kitchens, you know, our back is to you, right, because we're cooking here, we're turning around. So it's much harder to do a, a food segment because it's not an open kitchen where I can look at camera. Uh, but you, we do it all the time at Blue Ginger. We have a long, super long line. We just actually put a gigantic booze block perpendicular. So they actually shoot down the line. So they're still shooting at us, and they get the pan from the side. Um, the, the whole key is do it between services or do it in the morning where there's not a lot of noise and people around. Uh, they do like seeing cooks behind you prepping. That's fine because you're doing it in a restaurant. So you don't have to have complete science because you're in a restaurant. Uh, but they don't want to, you know, they don't want a completely full restaurant either. But you've also got to be aware if there's one camera and he's shooting and there's only one position to be in, the camera's over your left shoulder, you can't add things like this. Yeah, you're going to have totally. to do this and add it with your left hand and be awkward to face the camera. Yeah. Right. And be you aware of where the camera is that way. Twice too. If it's a one camera shoot, they'll shoot the segment and then they'll shoot it a second time because they want because they no way they got into the pan when the when the cod hit the pan and the sizzle. So they have to come a second time and get all the what they call Susan mentioned blocking. Blocking is before the show starts. They got the bowl of berries, they got the tomatoes, they got the avocados, so they got every individual ISO that's in the bank. Then they shoot the show and if it's a one camera, they have to come back and see you the knife going through the tomato, see the the fish hitting the pan. Um, Finish. So you have a wood burning oven, they like to sort of see it go in and then they like to actually see it come out. But you still would set it up in the same way. You might have it halfway done or three fourths done. But you're also oftentimes it is taped. And so even though you're doing it quick, they're going to edit it to make yeah. it to where they want it so they can cut it out. Which is, a, that's a, a, I think, a key point. If it's a tape show, do it until you're happy, right? They're, they're using your time, they're in your restaurant. So if you're not super elated, do it again. And if they and, and insist, and we don't have time, says, well, then you can't use my segment because you're giving yourself out. So, you know, so in other words, if you, if you overcooked a steak and you slice it and it's gray, there's no way I'd want that on TV, hmm. right? You just can't. It's impossible. So do, we got to do it again, sorry. And that's just life. And, and you have to insist that because otherwise, you know, you're putting stuff out. It's, everything you do is part of brand building. So every little part matters. How significantly, on the local level, do these uh, appearances help cook book sales? I mean, I know if you're on Conan, then that's great, but... Um, the well, local, yeah, the, I mean, the local, I think, it, the local is actually stronger for driving traffic into the restaurants, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. The national is great in order to be able to, I think, for cookbook sales, for visibility, for recognition when people are traveling. But in terms of local, I think that kind of visibility really does, because it's relevant to the viewers who are driving to work and seeing. So it's two very different things. Obviously, we always want to be on national TV, on Today Show, or Good Morning America, or Conan. Those are great because they raise your profile. But in terms of actually driving business, the local stuff really, I think, is probably in some ways more, more powerful. You also want a sense of pride in that too. I mean, people want to buy. They love to know that you're in their town, and they can buy your book. And when their friends come into town, they're going to come and buy your book. And that will. We sell a lot of books through through the restaurant, and they can come up and get it from you directly. They know where you are, and all of a sudden, when you've done it on local news, you're accessible on a local level. They know, like, oh yeah, I should go see her and get her book, or where can I get it? They'll call the network or the studio and find out how to how to be somewhere where you're going to be, as opposed to. Oh, yeah, I've seen that guy before. But make sure you figure out which station is the number one in that market. So if you're coming to Chicago, you wisely do Channel 7. It's the number one station by far. You wouldn't do Fox because hardly anybody watches Fox in Chicago. So if you're going to only do one station in Chicago, I'm not plugging my own station. I'm just, it's a fact. 
you want to go to the number one station. Yep. You want to get the most eyeballs you can. Yeah, and you do. I think, you know, as you're starting out in your career, you know, honestly, you do everything. And, you know, I mean, I think that's what you do because it gives you practice. Mm -hmm. Michael made a really great point. A lot of it's all about getting practice and more comfortable and being able to be in front of the camera, in front of an audience. All that is really valuable to sort of shape if you want to be in the media. It helps you to do that. So all those little things are important to you because yeah. of that. It gives you great training. I tell people in New York when I train them, do New York One first. Do some cable first. Get that under, you know, get under your belt. Then try to do the local CBS, local NBC. You know, get a couple of those under your belt. Then have somebody pitch you to GMA or Today Show. And it, it's the only way you can build your reel, right? You have to have reel. a reel in a home with one camera. No, that, you can't add that to your reel, right? A reel on a local TV, and then another local TV, and then that one. That the, then its pressure was it was real. Pressure was on. It was TV. It was a morning show. It was live. So they immediately can tell. It doesn't matter if it's national or local. They can immediately tell. Can you handle live TV? Uh, and you got to build that reel. Cooking demos are good practice too. Cooking so demos are great practice. You're involved in that sort of thing, doing as many demos as you possibly can, because all of those are now recorded anyway. Anyone with a cell phone can record a cooking demo. But also, it's planned. It's set up. It's a lot like doing one of these things, except you have a little bit more. Uh, there's more flexibility in air. But it's, it's, for me, it's a lot easier to go out and do a cooking demo because I'm in control of the whole situation. And then taking that demo, shrinking it down, and trying to do the same thing in three minutes. And it's very different to have a live audience and the reaction of a live audience versus just a TV camera. So there's a different, you know, you have it can have, you get energy from the live audience. Well, sometimes you, there, you hope to do yeah. right. You hope to But just like you get a joke, you're not laughing. Yeah. Right, you're getting energy from the live audience here, but it's different when you're just with somebody and there's no audience. Yeah. So we got to wrap it up. We're out of time, but thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm off. Thank you so much. Great to see you.